Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session, we're going to teach you how to use buttons, toolbars and keyboard shortcuts to run the code you've written in Excel VBA. So in this video, we're going to look at a variety of methods for running your VBA code, starting with assigning simple keyboard shortcuts to your macros. We'll then move on and show you how you can use simple buttons or basic drawing objects and attach macros to those instead on a worksheet. And finally, we'll end up with a look at how you can design your own ribbon tabs and toolbars, which gives your users the opportunity to run macros whichever workbook they happen to be in. So let's get started. In previous videos, we've shown you how you can run your VBA code from within the Visual Basic Editor, which is a really handy thing for you as a developer to be able to do, but not much good for your end users. So in this video, we're going to focus on ways you can make it easy for your end users to run the code that you've written for them. One of the simplest things you can do for your users is assign keyboard shortcuts to run your macros. So to do that, if you're in Excel 2007 or later, head to the Developer tab in the ribbon and click on the Macros button. Alternatively, you can just press Alt and F8 on the keyboard. If you're in an earlier version of Excel, you need to head to the Tools menu, choose Macro, and then choose Macros. You can also just press Alt and F8 there again as well. Back to 2010, if I click on the Macros button, the list of macros then appears and you need to select the one that you want to assign a keyboard shortcut to. And when you have done that, click on the options button on the dialog box and type in the letter that you would like to use for your keyboard shortcut. Now you need to be quite careful about which letter you choose to type in here. My macro that I'm using is called create and label new sheet. So I might think it's a sensible idea to, to assign the letter C. To, uh, to run my macro, and that means that later on I would have to press Ctrl and C to run my macro back. Uh, the people who use keyboard shortcuts a lot already will have spotted a problem with that. Ctrl and C is also the keyboard shortcut for copy. And if I use the letter C, my keyboard shortcut will take precedence over the existing keyboard shortcut. So when I press OK and then close down the macro dialog box, if I press Control C on the keyboard now, rather than copying a cell, it actually runs my custom macro instead. So I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to go back to the Macros dialog box, select Create and Label New Sheet, and then choose Options. One way you can avoid that from happening, or make it less likely you'll encounter an existing keyboard shortcut, is to type in capital letters. So if I type in a capital letter C, that means that to run my macro back, I need to use Control and Shift and C. So if I click OK and then close down the macro dialog box again, I'll just quickly delete this sheet and then press Control and Shift and C. That will run my macro back. Control and C by itself will now copy a cell as it should do. Now, keyboard shortcuts have a variety of drawbacks. First of all, you've, as you've just seen, there's the risk of overwriting an existing keyboard shortcut. There's also the added problem of having to remember the new sequence of keyboard shortcuts to run your macros as well. It's also not immediately obvious to a user that a keyboard shortcut exists in a workbook that they can use to run your macros. So for all those reasons, you might find it more sensible to use buttons that your users can click on to run your code. To draw a button that can have a macro attached to it in Excel 2007 or later, again you'll need to be on the Developer tab of the ribbon, and look for the Insert tool. When you click on the drop-down arrow, you'll see a list of various different objects you can add to your spreadsheet. They're actually divided into two separate sections in this list. The top section is referred to as Form Controls, and the bottom section is referred to as ActiveX Controls. We're going to be dealing with ActiveX Controls in a later video. They're a little bit more complex to use than the basic Form Controls. So for now, just stick to the top half of this, this window. If you're in Excel 2003 or earlier, you can display the Form Controls toolbar. So if I quickly switch into Excel 2003, if I right click towards the top of the screen near any existing toolbar, I should find that there's a Forms toolbar that I can display. The corresponding toolbar for the ActiveX controls is referred to as the Control Toolbox, but again we're going to avoid using the ActiveX controls here. So if I choose Forms, I should see a new toolbar appears. It's actually already been nested at the top of my screen, but you can see this is the Forms toolbar with a similar list of controls as I was seeing in the later version of Excel. So back to Excel 2010, as I'm in, 
To draw a button, all I need to do is from my list and the insert tool, click on the first object here, which is a button, it looks like a little boring grey brick, and then move the mouse cursor over the screen and simply click once again to draw the button. From the dialog box, I now have to choose which macro I'd like to attach to, to that button. So I select the only one that I have available here and then click OK. And finally, my button will appear. So while I have it still selected, I can do the standard things as I can to any drawing object. I can resize it by clicking on the resizing handles. I can select the text that's in the button as well. I can click and drag to move it around. I can select the text as I was trying to do there and I can overtype that text with a new slightly more descriptive phrase. So create new sheet, perhaps. I might need to resize it again a little bit more. If you're particularly fussy about where your button sits, you can make it line up to the borders of cells while you click and drag to move it around. If you hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, the one to the left hand side of the space bar, you should find that your button will now snap to the borders of cells. And the same is true when you resize it as well. Instead of moving smoothly, it will jump and snap to the edges of cells. So that's in case you're a perfectionist and you want to get things to line up neatly. When you've finished modifying your button, what you can then do is click on any other cell in the worksheet. And that effectively activates the button. So the very next time I hover the mouse over it, I get the standard hand sort of hyperlink symbol. And when I click on the button itself, it will now trigger and run my macro. If you find that you need to modify a button after you've added it to your spreadsheet or if you need to move it around, of course you can't select it anymore by simply clicking on it because doing that will trigger your macro again. So to select the button, the easiest thing to do is simply right click on it. And from there you have a variety of choices. You can choose to edit the text, which lets you modify the information that you've typed in. You could choose to assign a different macro to the button. So as you saw earlier on, you get the assign macro dialog box. You could also choose to do some basic formatting of the control. There's quite little you can do actually with these basic form buttons. You can essentially change the font size, color and, and typeface that you're using, a bit of alignment changes and size, but you can't do fancier things like change the background color or change the border style. And in fact, in this version of Excel, if I head to the format tab, the drawing tools format tab, you'll find that all the fancy options are all grayed out. So it really is a case of just being able to format the text here. If you wanted an object which you could use to run your code and you could format with the fancy options such as fill and outline and shape effects, then it turns out that you can actually attach a macro to any basic drawing object that you can add to your spreadsheet. So if I head to the insert tab in this version of Excel or in an earlier version, you might simply use the drawing toolbar so you can find the auto shapes tools. You can essentially draw any basic shape that you want to using the shapes menu so I could draw a fancy rounded rectangle or a 3D shape or even hearts and lightning flashes if I, if I must. So let's, let's have a heart shape that will run our, our lovely macro. So if you've drawn a basic shape, of course you get all the extra lovely options you can apply to it in terms of formatting. I can add text to the object just by simply typing into it. I might need to do a little bit of formatting there to get it to uh, sort of be aligned properly. But when I want to attach a macro to it, all I need to do is right click on the object and choose Assign Macro. And you can do this to not just basic drawing objects, you can also do it to clip art or inserted images. You can attach a macro to essentially anything you can draw on a spreadsheet. So once I've done that, again I need to click away from the object to essentially activate it. And then next time I hover the mouse over the tool, I get the standard hyperlink mouse cursor, the finger pointing. And when I click on that object, it now runs my macro. One downside to using buttons and drawing objects to run your code is that, of course, those buttons are only available when you're looking at the worksheet you've drawn them on. Sometimes it's nice to have a universal control that sits at the top of the screen, like the ribbon and menu and toolbars system. And in Excel 2007 and later, you can add new buttons to this quick access toolbar at the top left-hand corner of the screen. To do that, click on the drop down arrow at the right hand side of the toolbar and choose the more commands option. On the dialog box that appears then, you can choose whether you're modifying the access toolbar for 
every workbook you work in for all documents or just for the workbook that you currently have open. I'm going to choose just for this workbook, for the basic VBA workbook. So that means that currently I don't have any buttons on my quick access toolbar in this workbook. I could choose to add from a list of popular commands or I can choose from a list of different categories here, commands that are currently not in the ribbon, all commands, or the one that I really want, the one called macros. Select the macro you want to create a button for, you can then either double click on it or just click the add button to transfer it across. I can then choose to modify that button to give it a different icon, so if I don't like the current default icon I can choose from a slightly wider range of images. It's quite difficult to find one that represents what your macro actually does. I'm struggling to find one that represents inserting a new worksheet here, so I'll click on the envelope option instead and choose OK. I can also change the, the tooltip that appears when I let the mouse cursor linger over that button. I'm going to leave it as is for now, but I can overwrite that if I wanted to. So I can click OK, click OK again, and now my quick access toolbar adds an extra button here. If I let the mouse cursor linger over it, it shows me the tooltip. And if I click on the button, it now runs my macro just as previously. In Excel 2010 and later, you can actually go a stage further and create completely new tabs which will sit in the ribbon. So to do that, you can right click on any existing tab in the ribbon and choose to customize the ribbon. The dialog box that appears is fairly similar to the one that we've just seen. What we need to do is create, first of all, a new tab by clicking the new tab button at the bottom. So the new tab appears with some default names. If you select one of these items and then click the rename button, that will allow you to give it a new name. So I'm going to call mine Wise Owl Tools and click OK. You can also rename the group. So I'm going to call this group um, with the rename option. I'm going to call this group um, Basic Macros and click OK. At that point, what I need to do is then add commands, or in my case, macros, into the group that I've just created. So again, if I use the drop-down list at the top left-hand corner and choose macros, I can then select a macro, select a group, and then click the add button to add the selected macro to the selected group. Again, if I click, uh, select that tool, I can do basic things like rename it, and I can give it a different icon again if I wanted to. Again, I still can't spot a, s a sensible icon to use for inserting a new sheet. I'll choose the book this time. Click OK, click OK again, and now a new tab appears in the ribbon called Wise Owl Tools. And when I select it, I have a new button that I can click on to once again run my macro. Unfortunately, you can't do this in Excel 2007. Um, in Excel 2007, the only thing you can customize in the ribbon is the, uh, the quick access toolbar. It's much, much more difficult to modify the ribbon itself. You can also create new buttons and toolbars in Excel 2003 and earlier. To start with, you need to right click with the mouse towards the top of the screen near all the existing toolbars and menus, and then choose the option called Customize from the list. On the dialog box which appears, if you want to choose to create a toolbar first, head to the Toolbars tab and then click on the New button. You can then give your toolbar a sensible name, so I'm going to call mine Wise Owl Tools again. And then click OK and your new toolbar will appear floating somewhere on the screen, but it won't have any commands on it just yet. So at this stage you need to head to the Command tab and then choose which commands you would like to add to your toolbar. So again you can select from a, from a range of existing options. But what we really want to do is find our macro. So if I scroll down the list and find the macros category, somewhat strangely this time I don't see a list of the exact specific macros I've recorded or written. All I get is a, a, a generic button called custom button. What I need to do is click and drag one of these happy smiley faces onto my new toolbar and then I can right click on that button and choose to assign a macro to it. So again, here I can choose to assign my Create and Label New Sheet macro and click OK and my button is now has a macro assigned to it. There's a variety of things I can do now to modify the button and I must do that while the Customize dialog box is still open. So while it's still open, right click on the smiley face again. I can generate a tooltip to, uh, that will appear when I hover the mouse over the button. So let's call that, I uh, you know, Create New Sheet. 
I can also choose to modify the button's image with the change button image option. I actually get a much smaller range of images to select from this time. But actually in Excel 2003 it doesn't really matter because if I can't find an image that I like I have the wonderful ability to actually draw my own button images. Something sadly lacking from later versions of Excel, you can actually design your own buttons. Now it's something of a dark art coming up with an image in 16 by 16 pixels that clearly represents what your macro will do. Um, so you usually end up just doing silly things like this. But if I click OK and there's my button finished. I can now close down the customize dialog box and I can now use my toolbar and my button as though it was an existing button in Excel. Clicking this tool will generate a brand new sheet. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.